Uh, I'll be honest with you, Mr. Camp. I don't. I don't know what his interpretation was of, of our interaction that day. I don't know. Um, I don't know what the. Um, I, I didn't interview him or talk with him after that particular date. Um, I, I don't presume to understand like why he would obtain the services of an attorney. Um, if he felt that he was in some legal jeopardy or maybe criminally culpable for for you know the mishandling of that camera, uh, he was never officially charged or anything along those lines. And he wouldn't have gotten. He wouldn't have. You didn't do anything to lead him to believe that he's going to get in trouble for calling y'all about that. Uh, that drive. What did he call it? The little card, SD card. Oh my God! It's a memory card guy. Can you can you ask me the question again? There, there, there was nothing that that he would be able to infer that you told him where he would be fearful that you know y'all were trying to prosecute him for calling y'all to give you evidence i don't believe there would be anything he can he can infer but like i said a second ago i i don't presume to know what mr smiley was thinking or or what his motivations were in uh in obtaining the services of that of that attorney um it's mine yeah why would he want an attorney Something had to make him think that he needed an attorney. His wife is dead. His stepdaughter she tries to shoo him, kills her, but he needs an attorney because he accidentally clipped and pasted or whatever, but they found all the evidence on the other computer. And he probably would... I don't know if he knows forensics about computers, but once they started talking about it, my brain was like, oh yeah, they're, they're going to be able to find all that. They're going to be able to find everything. All that. Just because you delete something doesn't mean it's gone forever. They can find that crap. They found it. They know they found it. And he thinks he's got to go get an attorney. Um, I'm curious of why he would want an attorney out of all of this. It makes somebody look suspicious when they want an attorney. It doesn't mean that somebody doesn't have the right to get an attorney. Don't misunderstand. But it's just the uh, the the... <laughs> The, the whole premise of it is like, okay, are, are you guilty of something? Why do you need an attorney? Understanding that even after he obtained the services of an attorney, I believe he was still cooperative. Well, I would hope so. And then uh, did you, I guess, and you sat in for the, uh, he was cooperative when he came in and sat and talked with you, correct? He did not talk to me. Oh, you, you weren't present for that interview, for, yes. for Smiley's interview? No, sir. I, 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 after after that particular date, I, I never or I think I had one more interaction with Mr. Smiley whenever uh, he signed a property release form uh, post forensic extraction of his phone and the return of that particular SD card. Um, I believe that was my last interaction with Mr. Smiley. And he said something about his driver's license that y'all hadn't given him his driver's license back. Oh, and, I remember that. You, I don't know if you're aware of any of that. I have no idea. No, sir. I don't know anything about that. Now there were some vape pen boxes that yes, were that were found. Did you find those? Uh, yes, sir. They so whenever we went into the master bedroom, they were um, they were in between that that knitting bag, so to speak, and the uh, the back of that chair that was at the desk. Okay, so those are put. Some, those are those were hidden back someplace, sort of. You said or you said they were behind. They were like behind a chair and by a knitting bag, so they're uh, not like out in obvious there i mean if you if you looked at the chair you could you, you could clearly see the tops of the um clearly see the tops of the boxes and this is in the master bedroom correct yes sir okay So clearly, Carly didn't do a very good job of hiding her vapes, knowing that her mother was going to be searching her room just saying. Yeah, she, she ain't crying today. So, when you're looking at the knitting bag here, you can, I mean, you can see that these are purple, maroon, orange, and uh, like a fuchsia color. So essentially, now remember the defense said in her opening statement that they weren't going to find stuff. 
if I can remember correctly, yeah, it's been a few days since I've watched the um, the opening statements from both sides. I mean, I do understand that she was wanting to say that, you know, they're going to find fault with the police. I'm just paraphrasing and fault with this. And you're not going to find evidence of this. And you're not going to find evidence of drugs. And you're not going to find evidence of stuff in her room. Well, I could have sworn that's what she said. But here we go. They found some vapes. They're they're right here. So in in between the knitting bag and the back of that the back of that chair. And that in that room is the master bedroom. Correct. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, you talked about um, some pictures of, of Ashley. Yes, sir. Okay, and I just want to make sure you talked about that there were three gunshots. Yes, sir. And did you did you the night before we talk about the gunshots? I just had a thought. Now, she. The defense asking that, it's it's like okay, so now we know she wasn't supposed to have vapes. So so now you've established that she's defiant against her parents' wishes of not having these things. She's just fourteen years old, and she's a murderer. No, I just thought I'd point that out. That yeah, okay, we've established just in that questioning right there, my mind popped up. Oh well, she's defiant. She has this crap in her room, and she's not supposed to have them. Oh, yeah, she's this sweet, innocent girl, but she's being defiant and disobeying her parents. I, a lot of teenagers disobey their parents. Don't misunderstand that. You know, I'm just saying this is compiling, unpiling, unpiling on her behavior. I guess you were there on the 19th. The, the night of the, the, the 19th is when this happened. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You were there. Yes, sir. And that's when you're, it sounded like. You were saying that you had determined that there were three gunshots at that time. Is that correct? Uh, no, sir. Not three gunshots at that particular time. If the, on that particular evening, we could only corroborate two. Through the course of the investigation, there were three. Okay. So somebody else gives you that information that there are three. You didn't. You didn't go and examine the body yourself and say there were there were three gunshots it was i guess were you able to tell there were multiple that night and then you found out subsequently there was another one is that sort of how it happened you asked me you asked me two different questions can you can can you can you ask me again and i'll i'll, I'll answer them both well it sounded like that the way your testimony came across to me and it may okay. not have been you may not have intended this but it sounded like that you're that you sort of examined the body the night of the 19th okay. and made a determination that there were three gunshots okay. now my okay. understanding is you knew that there were two of them that night correct and that they found a third one later would that be correct yes and yes and no so we knew there were three gunshots involved after after the recovery of the second camera from the kitchen um, there were multiple videos from the night, from the date of March 19th, um, where Miss Gregg is clearly visible and depicted on that video. Um, she walks, um, she exits that back door into the backyard from the kitchen yeah, area, this, dining area. Is this a, this so, is a video? Okay, so the reason why I'm laughing, and this is not funny, but the defense opened the door for him to just say that. To just come out and go, well, uh, it's clear in the evidence there was three gunshots because, you know, the audio's on the tape. And and Miss Griggs had the gun in her hand. Dad, blame. I think this is why I know I stopped it, but uh, maybe the defense is like, well, wait a minute. That's not what I'm asking. Because, damn. That's, wow. That's just crazy. If you just walked into that, he's like, well... How did you? What? It's the, again, the defense is just trying to, to find some trip ups. Of who cares? Of course, you're probably going to find extra stuff. And when, when they get her body back to get autopsy, maybe they didn't see all three shots, but clearly she's dead and shot twice. Then they see the video. There was three shots fired. Let's see. Now the coroner was on. I didn't cover that. Um, 
well, this guy that they had on earlier, uh, the ball headed guy, sorry, I don't know what his name was, but I skimmed through his testimony and he didn't actually do the autopsy. He was there to observe the body, take photographs of the body uh, at the scene, right? I guess all that helps in the investigation and helps with the uh, autopsy too late, later, like how's the body look right then and there before it gets moved and transported. So basically that's what his, but I haven't really heard the, the guy who actually did the autopsy. This was just a guy who assisted the coroner in gathering evidence before the uh, removal of the body. But this is just crazy. He just said all that. Well, clearly there was three shots because uh, Mrs. Greggs had the gun. Good Lord. That was like, bam. I, to me, guys, that was a bomb that just went off. Video that's I don't think has been at, entered into evidence yet. Are you aware of if it's in evidence? I don't have a clue, no, sir. <laughs> Uh, so anyway, so they, she, she exits into the backyard oh. and then comes back in a little while later, walks in the direction of the, um, so walks, comes back in the back door, the dining room area right here, walks around down toward the master, the master bedroom, comes back in where this camera is right here in this corner. She ain't crying. And so it faces back this way. So it captures anybody walking past this living room wall. And so when she walks back past this way, her hands are behind her back. She's kind of peering around this, this, um, this um, I guess, peninsula of a wall right here, peering around it, trying to see if there's anybody in there. And then she walks down this way, goes into her room. Well, prior to that in the video, you can see Ashley Smiley down in this area of the house. Of course, the uh, her entrance into that room is out of frame. So you can see... Um, Carly walked down this way, her hands are hidden behind her back, and um, she walks down into this room. You hear a total of three gunshots, or you hear one gunshot, um, who we suspect is Ashley Smiley screaming, and then you hear another gunshot, quiet, and then a third gunshot. And then Miss Greg walks back out of that area, comes and sits into the... Uh, Good Lord, he just lets him say all of this. Oh, my God. Guys, let me know. What the hell? This is probably one of the better photos. Sorry. One of the better photos. This of is it. so the these defense. There are actually two this of these witness. chairs posted around this corner of that bar. And uh, so she essentially sits down in one of those chairs. Her hands are behind her because she can, I, I guess, knows that the camera's right there. But oh. uh, sets something hard and metallic, which would be similar to that uh, to this revolver, um, in on the metallic. Now, I'll start right Three fifty-seven. See the revolver. You cannot. You know, you know and and I, and I guess that's what I said. What what would be similar to the sound if you set the revolver down? Oh yeah. On a it uh, was on clear. A hard metallic surface like this. Yeah, it, it was clangs, clear. And it then clanked. she uh, and it looks in, like she picks up a phone. And I'm in, sorry. And in fact, you never see My her with God. the revolver at any time. Correct. That is correct. You never see her with the revolver. Her hands are always behind her back, uh, as if she's trying to conceal something behind her back. Um, but she, uh, like I said, she sits down this, you hear this metallic clang. She picks up the, uh, the white phone that we, um, that we determined was hers, and, this and white I'm one. Trying so, to... uh, okay, so, so the, the defense says, well, you, you never saw the gun in her hand. What? We know she did it. Man, this, it's tough being a defense attorney. It is a tough job. It is clear as present day that girl snuck around went down the hall got the gun had it behind her back you hear three shots she immediately goes into the kitchen you hear a clunk behind her it is like dab blame oh man where is this going i am like i said before i was more interested in what is the defense doing how are they gonna weasel her to get a lower Obviously, they they know she did it, right? Because they said at the beginning, it's not it's not who did it, it's why she did it, right? Basically, that's what the defense is saying. So they're just trying to minimize, 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 minimize. But to say, well, you never saw the gun in her hand. What? Why would you? I don't know. 
I'm just fascinated by how this defense is going because it's like, damn. It's way more entertaining than the prosecution's case. Because the prosecution's case already has it. It's kind of dry. To me, it's a slam dunk. Boom. But to watch the defense uh, dance is uh, is interesting. To uh, jump in, but yeah, I want to know about the uh, rooms because you said the camera faces back away from, I guess, the, the, the wing of the house where all this took place. Okay. And... You and there and there's three rooms, correct? There's so right. Two. So there's a workout room. There's a guest or I say a guest bathroom. It, it's a bathroom that was uh, that was you know essentially controlled and, and and occupied by Carly Gregg. Her toothbrush, hairbrush, things like that were all found in there. There's a linen closet, and then of course there's a room. So the camera focuses right here, and then of course catches her whenever she's using her mom's cell phone to text uh, Mr. Heath Smiley, uh, which we later found out through that forensic extraction I was telling you about a second ago, that um, sent a text message to him, which kind of was the odd text message, like, hey, honey, what time are you coming home? Something like that. And those are not pet names that they that they used, which, uh, which kind of put him on uh, suspicion that maybe something was awry. And obviously, with all the timestamps on the phone, uh, the timestamp on the, the video footage of the camera in the home, all of that just just lines up neat like a neat little package gift wrapped for the prosecution and the police officers. The, she, the defense has had him on the stand for an hour, people. They he has been on there for an hour. Now he wasn't on there that long with the the prosecution, but dad blame this guy has been on most of the day. But, uh, but nevertheless, like she sends these text messages or communicates on her mother's phone and then picks up the item that clanged in the chair and then she oh. walks back into her bedroom again or toward her bedroom again. And so when she walks towards the bedroom, you don't know because the camera doesn't, I guess it doesn't face towards the bedroom. So you don't know where Ashley went to because I think on the camera it shows Ashley going in in and out a couple of times. You don't know where Ashley was as far as uh, what bedrooms or there's even a bathroom back there. So when I, I, I'm just thinking out of the box now or thinking back watching the video and then them bringing up that uh, Carly goes back. Do you think that's when she went back to cover her mother's face since she started texting people and wanting her friends over? She, she covered her mother's face and she's going in. There. Plus, it's in her bedroom. Was there something in there that she wanted to get, but she didn't want to look at what she has done? So she covered she covered the face. What is the significance of covering the face? Hmm. And you don't know which... Uh rooms that Carly was in, correct? Based upon the on-scene investigation, I would deduce that Miss Smiley was in Carly's room at the time that the three shots were fired. Uh, based upon the defect in the wall and the fact that... We're, we're, we're saying, I guess we're talking about the video. As far as from the video, we, we know where the incident took place eventually. Okay, I, I apologize. I, th I thought you were asking me where where Miss where Miss Smiley was in reference to the gunshots. Uh, and I, I apologize. Yeah, but you don't I know. You you can't see her go into any specific Look at her. room She's at any bored. time. Correct. She's not even crying. The video does not show her going into any specific room. However, the uh, the foundational evidence that we collected either through the photographing of the scene, the identifying of defects and things along those lines in the car. And, and it shows room. back in the in eventually in the bedroom. Correct. Now you Correct. talk about another This is why I think she's a, a, a narcissistic sociopath. So we're just on day two. I still got more trial to go through. But observing day one and most of day two which has been him. When did Carly cry? Carly cried whenever somebody was on the stand, uh, literally referring to her in like a positive way. Well, she's really smart. She's good at math. They smile. 
But when the prosecution, when the when the when the when the uh, defense attorney was up doing the opening, she's boohooing. She boohooed during uh, her dad crying and screaming. She she it's like she can cry on demand. I'm not an expert. I keep saying it, but there's a pattern here. Of when does she cry? When does it? And she's how much can you cry too? Okay, I know people are going to say that. But it's clear that she cries when when things were were referring to her. That it was an emotional tie to her. That that's a good way of pointing it. An emotional tie to her. Now here they are in detail. He's talking about Carly getting the gun, the clanging of the gun on the chair, the body in the room. She nothing, zero nada. She looked bored. Just wanted to point that out. The the other picture, which was the. I guess the the boxes that we just talked about, the little vape boxes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, yes, sir. you do not see those in anybody's hands, correct? So, at, at a point, at a portion of the video, you can see Miss Smiley. She is essentially back in what we believe is is Carly's room. Um, the she walks to she walks toward her own bedroom uh, in the same path that that Carly took, like after she brings the dogs back in the house. And she has something small in her hands, which we, which we believe are these. Well, that's not very small. That's sort of that's a big flat. There's four of them, right? Right. If you stack them, if you stack them together, and you're holding them like this, you may not you may not be able to see it because I mean the the camera's like from here to Mr. Mr. Levinson. Okay. So, I mean, so you don't know if that's what she's even holding, correct? Correct. The only thing I'm deducing is that it's small. And that you can see an object that she's toting from Carly's room, based upon the interviews we did with Brooke Wafer. She was using, uh, you know, THC vapes and things along those lines. And then we find empty vape pen boxes in the um, in the master bedroom of Mr. Mr. and Mrs. Smiley. Okay, and Brooke never identifies those whatsoever. That is correct. Okay. That's the girl that was with her. I don't think she was there long enough to identify Man, anything. She just saw a dead body. A yes. Oh, yeah, we decided to just start vaping until her dad got home, and then I went outside. Carly is kind of a creepy little kid. <laughs> Even if she served 20 years, would you want her back in your house if she was your daughter? Oh, my God. No. No. I would I would probably want to move. You don't know where I live. But I'll still love you. But no. Can never trust her again. Guys, y'all remember when you were 14, 15? Did you want to kill somebody, literally? May we approach you there's something wrong with these. There's something wrong with these kids. For Pete's sake. I think they're going to play a video. What? They never play all that all that gobbly goose sidebar. Earlier, before the defense, you talked about uh, this is redirect. I'm gonna stand over here so that I can see. Yes, ma'am. Uh, you talked about a uh, video um, from inside the Smiley House that you've seen from March the 19th, 2024. Yes, ma'am. Um, have you had the opportunity to view? There were multiple videos from the time that Ashley Smiley and Carly got home until the video stopped. Is that right? That's correct. Have you had the opportunity to review each and every one of those? Ye yes, ma'am. It, 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 during the uh, during the initial recovery, uh, we watched we watched uh, a lot of them. Yes, ma'am. Until because essentially they're they're not time stamped or anything. They're oh. put into a folder. I thought they so were. So we had to go through the folders systematically to try and watch the videos and find the time stamp and figure out kind of what was going uh. on in in the actual scene itself to figure out kind of where we needed to be and which which videos were of evidentiary value. When you viewed the videos, is there an actual timestamp on the video? Correct. It's in the bottom right hand corner, yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, and <clears throat> to your knowledge, did you watch all of the videos from when 
Carly Gregg and Ashley Smiley walk into the house until the video camera shuts off. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Uh, maybe right, John. I hadn't seen video of um, of the mom and her walking in. I did try to find it the other day, but I got so much to cover. I was just like, well, I don't know. I can't find it. I need a tech. I need a help. There's Carly taking notes. When is she taking notes? Oh, there's a timestamp on the video. What is she writing down? Just inquiring minds want to know. Looked like her grandfather was smiling at her. My God. I wonder if that's the parent. Is that the parents? Somebody let me know. If anybody's still watching this, let me know in the comments. Is that what has been purported to be the her video mother's parents? From the kitchen will be admitted all purposes by stipulation without objection as S46. We bring it, mark it. Permission to publish this to the jury, Your Honor. Yes, ma'am. I think this is the first time the jury's seeing this, I'm assuming. Yeah. The jury watched the body cam footage. They haven't seen this. Holy smokes. This is what happens when you watch things ahead of time. Like, I've seen the, the, the footage of the kitchen, the pre-trial. Well, no, the trial had already started. I'm just late on covering it. She's got to see this. I hope they put the. I wish they'd do a split screen, her face while the, while the video's going. I think I think the jury's seeing this for the first time. Holy smokes! Oh, and there's the mom. Oh my God. I guess I could have just pulled up day two. That, that's the first time I saw the video with the mom.
Oh God. This is um, obviously creepy and disturbing because we know she's going to die. None of us ever know when the end comes. In what manner? Lord have mercy. Okay, let's see if we can see if she has something in her hands when she walks back by, because that's what the defense they were they were talking about before he got off the stand. I'm wondering if they could just stop it and zoom in and clean it up. Well, I didn't see nothing there. It was too quick. Somebody in the chat says she's got the pins now. I don't know. I didn't see anything. Unless she had them when she walked by to head to her room. Oh, she had something in her hand right there.
I mean, could the defense go with um, heat of the moment? Like, a, you know how they have, like, crimes of passion? They go heat of the moment because she's pissed that her mom took her vapes? I think right there she knew her mom's in her room. Oh. Uh, I've seen this part. Holy smokes. She clearly had the gun. I bet she shot her while she was on the ground. There was the sound of the gun. Oh, she's toast. The jury just saw this, people, for the first time. It's over. Cold blood sneak attack. Somebody just wrote in the chat. Yeah, it is unimaginable. There she goes, Texas. It is. This is done for her. The jury see it's over. There ain't nothing the the defense could do but just try to You think that was her mother moaning? My God, this is just insane. It's insane that we have this footage. She's a creepy little kid. Good Lord. I think this me seeing the mom come in and watching the whole thing in its entirety. I had only seen the part where she creeps around and goes back. It, it really... It's way more of an impact now that I saw the mother come in with her. And her mother's just looking around in her room finding stuff. It's... Um, it took it to a, even a higher level of disturbing. That for me personally. I mean, to me, this doesn't just this doesn't. It's not showing me that she's mentally ill. It's showing me she's a little pissed off teenager. She wants to get the problem out of the way, and the problem was her mother. Now, if somebody wants to make if somebody wants to make the argument that, uh, well, she doesn't understand the ramifications of what she's just done. That is permanent. I, I don't, I'm not even buying that. She knows right from wrong. Her mother is dead. And as she she's calling a friend to come over, friend comes to the door, she asks her, are you screamish around dead bodies? So she's still not even affected by it. <sighs> Please.
Plus, yeah. yeah. She's telling, I bet she's telling the dogs to stay out of her room. This is unbelievable. My God. That's it. This is the first trial I've seen in a long time that uh, has this type of footage. So, so far, she's gotten rid of the gun. She's covered her mother's face, and she's made phone calls. Return the exhibit to the court report. Oh, my God. She's not even upset about this. Stand down, but you're still under subpoena. You don't need to discuss your testimony with anyone. While he's exiting the room, do any of the, do any of the jurors need a restroom break before we have further witnesses? Anybody? All right, they're going to call our next witness. I'm going to end this video with the finishing up his testimony because, man, this was a disaster for the defense. Again. I'm just like, how are they going to continue with this? That she is toast. I, I, if y'all all watch this, you're on the jury. You're thinking, who cares if the guy turned off his his uh, body cam? Who cares if if the stepdad got a little pissy at the detectives? Look what she just did. This creepy little kid. None of all that is just out the window. The defense has nothing. They got nothing. Now that, that I'm, I still need to watch the rest of the trial. But as of right now, from what I've seen, they got diddly squat to get her out of this hot water. To even or even to minimize her sentence. That that was just. <sighs> oh, and then when the trial's over, I would love for them to interview the the jurors. I'd love to hear each stage of the the trial. How how did they feel? Did they get swayed by anything? Did did the defense make any points? And making you feel sorry for Carly because she was allegedly abused by her real father? I think not. It looked like her parents, her stepfather, and her mother loved her, cared about her. She knew the difference between right and wrong. She knew drugs were wrong. Her father's in prison. Other kids get disciplined. It's not like, oh, you're just now disciplining me even though I'm an A student. But yeah, you're doing some dumb stuff because you're a teenager. And she goes, gets a, a magnum. Good Lord. Anyway, thank you for joining me. Let me know in the comments what you think about the trial.